How's it going everyone? Curly Fry here back with another 2K21 video and in this video I am going to be showing you guys three great jump shots today. I'm going to be showing you guys ones that are really really fast. I'm going to show you guys that are super good and I'll explain everything with them too. And also, as you can see, this is next gen gameplay, but this is not a next gen jump shot. I'm just giving you guys next gen gameplay because that's why I played recently. But I don't want to see any comments saying, oh my gosh, I thought this was a current gen video because it doesn't say next gen in the title because I just explained it right here. Now, I'm going to also show you guys the best badges in current gen as well. I'm going to do it by tiers. So I have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Of course, tier one is the best, and tier three is on the lower end. Tier three is still good, but it is not the best like tier one. And I'm going to show you guys tier one in just a second. So for tier one, we have catch and shoot, green machine, range extender, and hot zone hunter now for catch and shoot catch and shoot is really really good if you guys are a spot up shooter i still use catch and shoot even when i play and i'm usually the primary ball handler which is the point guard but um yeah catch and shoot is great i leave it on silver though i don't put it on gold or hall of fame because in my opinion that's a waste of a badge because i feel like it works just as good on silver and then green machine is great if you get consistent greens only if you get consistent greens if you guys cannot green it doesn't make sense to put a green machine on but if you guys are shooters you should be able to green all the time if you guys don't my jump shots are going to help you in this video so you guys are going to be able to put green machine on because you guys can be able to green and then hot zone hunter hot zone hunter is great the only thing with hot zone hunter is it only works if you guys have hot zones and if you guys are shooters you should definitely have hot zones around the three-point line if you guys do not have hot zones around the three-point line or even the mid-range it really doesn't make sense to use hot zone hunter because hot zone hunter only works when you have a hot zone most likely you're going to have cold spots in the mid-range because it gets really con contested there so don't worry about that too much but your hot zones should mostly be around the three-point line and if it is then you are set for hot zone hunter and i like to use hot zone hunter on hall of fame like i said with catch and shoot i like to use it on silver so not every badge you should put on hall of fame some badges you should just leave at like silver because they work just as good like unpluckable and bailout i just put that on bronze and i'm set but with Hot Zone Hunter, I like to leave it at Hall of Fame. And then Range Extender is a no-brainer. Everyone has to use Range Extender. Now for Tier 2, we have Deadeye and Flexible Release. So Deadeye is the primary badge in Tier 2. And what Deadeye does is when someone is about to contest your shot or contesting your shot, it reduces the impact of your shot. And then Flexible Release is you just... Uh, shoot better there's not much to it you just shoot better i don't use flexible release but according to 2k labs if you guys do not know what 2k labs is they do a bunch of tests on different badges and everything like that but according to them flexible release gives a way better impact than a badge like tireless shooter which a bunch of people use i don't know why but in this 2k 2k21 current gen tireless shooter does not really do um any good really it's just there i don't know why a lot of 2ks like 2k20 i'm pretty sure tireless shooter was actually a pretty good badge but in current gen of 2k21 it's not that good but in tier 2 you have deadeye and you really need to use deadeye deadeye is an amazing badge because some people just come out of nowhere like you don't know where they come from they come out of nowhere and they impact your shot so to reduce the impact of that having deadeye helps a lot sometimes i green like a 50 percent covered jumper on next time i do that all the time like i have deadeye on and blinders and a guy could pull up on me and i have like a 50 percent contested and i green that it just it's just amazing so make sure you have deadeye on even though um this is current gen on next gen i use it and it is amazing i don't really play current gen because i don't know i don't really i don't really like it the zens i know they banned zens but like 
I don't know, I stopped playing after the Zen stuff because I can't play with cheaters. Cheaters annoy me and I get pissed. <laughs> I get really mad. I play this game. Uh, I don't play this game for fun. I play it like to win. So when people have Zens, I just stop playing it. But I know on, on next gen, Dead Eye is great. So on current gen, it's great. Now for tier three, we have difficult shots, corner specialists, and deep fades. Difficult shots, everyone knows what this is. When you take a fadeaway shot or just a difficult shot in general, it gives a boost to it. Usually, difficult shots is used in the mid-range area. You're not really going to use it on the three-point line. You shouldn't be fading at the three-point line. It really makes no sense because usually people take standstill threes or off the dribble threes, but they like they flick their stick so they're not moving that much. So you shouldn't really be fading around in the three-point line. But in the mid-range, you should be fading because it's actually really lethal there. Next up, we have deep fades. Deep fades. This is really good for post scorers. So when you're taking a fade from the mid range, that's pretty deep. It gives a boost to it. And it's kind of OP, not going to lie. People use this and they make crazy, crazy shots. I will leave this on Hall of Fame to give the best impact. And you're just going to be going crazy. And then we have Corner Specialist. Corner Specialist is one of my favorite badges. I love it so much because it never lets you down. Some badges let you down, but Corner Specialist never lets you down. And the big plus with Corner Specialist is that you can leave it on silver and it's going to give you a great impact. On every single 2k that I've played, I've always put Corner Specialist on silver and it's worked great. You shouldn't be putting Corner Specialist on gold or Hall of Fame because in my opinion, that's a waste of badge or badges depending on what level you put it on i'll put it on something else definitely do not put corner specialist on gold or hall of fame please you are going to mess up your badges just leave it on silver if you don't shoot from the corner don't put it at all but it does give a great boost on silver and i highly recommend it but that's going to be it for the tiers of the shooting badges now we're going to go into the jump shot like i said in the beginning of the video I have three jump shots that I'm going to be showing you guys. They're pretty fast and they're pretty good. One of them is really, really fast. I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. But to start off, this jump shot, I love it a lot. The base is Dwayne Wade, release one. Kobe Bryant, release two. Kobe Bryant, the release speed is all the way up. And then the animation blending is 47% Kobe Bryant and 53% Kobe Bryant. Really doesn't matter to be honest because they're both the same. But <laughs> just put it like that. And um, you're going to have a pretty, pretty good jump shot. I like it a lot. I like this jump shot the best out of all the jumpers in this video. I have my favorite jumpers uh, going one, two, three in this video. So the first one is my favorite. Second one is my second favorite. And then the third one is my third favorite. So if you guys want to just do the first one, just do the first one. If you guys want to choose all of them choose all of them i would test out every single jumper though because some people don't like certain jumpers now the second jump shot is base jump shot 98 release one damian lillard release two paul george the release speed is going to be all the way up for animation blending we're going to do damian lillard on 40 percent and then paul george on 60 percent now for the next jump shot i would fix around with the release speed not gonna lie Cause it's really really fast but the base is Dwayne Wade, release 1 Damian Lillard, release 2 Rudy Gay, release speed I have right now is all the way up but I would put it in the middle to be honest. The animation blending is 60% Damian Lillard and then 40% Rudy Gay and that jump shot is super super quick, rock with it super quick, see how you can do with it but I think it works the best if you have the, and if you have the release speed on 50%. Usually you never want to change the release speed to go down but that jump shot's really really fast not gonna lie you're gonna have to practice with it a lot to time the jump shot but i hope you guys like this video and make sure to subscribe and like